everybody, my name is Kathleen. I'm a registered psychologist. I like to make YouTube videos that help psychology students. I also like to make videos about things like study, health, and psychology concepts in general. So if any of that interests you, then please come and check out my YouTube channel. Last year, I was inspired to research every single psychology master's program available in Australia, because this is probably the number one question that students approach me with asking about, like, what university should they apply for? What would I recommend? So I went out and researched every single one. Some fun facts to get us started. There are currently 36 clinical master's programs and 29 professional master's programs available in Australia. There are also master's programs available in other endorsement areas, including organizational, educational, neurological, community, health, and forensic psychology. Most psychology students generally aim for clinical psychology. I'd say it's probably the most popular route. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about five clinical master's programs you could consider applying for, each with a competitive aspect that sort of makes them the best in Australia at the moment. This will be determined in terms of ratings, so how highly the uni ranks, uniqueness, so something really cool about the course that makes it stand out, and then flexibility, cost, and grades. We're gonna start with a really quick introduction about what you can typically expect from a clinical master's program, and then we'll do a deep dive into each of the five universities talking about why it's the best for its category. It's not gonna be what you expect, so stay tuned to the very end. The final thing I wanna let you know is I have put together a whole spreadsheet of all of the universities in Australia and their psychology master's programs. It outlines all the things that will be really important for you to know when you're going through and doing your applications. So things like the deadlines, the academic requirements, the costs of the course, just to name a few. My guide also includes information for how to write your personal statement and your CV step by step to make it easy for you as a lot of universities require this for the application process. Normally I only have this pack available on my platform for a month or two. It's something I might change, but I'm not too sure yet. So if it's something that you would like to purchase, I recommend doing it sooner rather than later because it may be removed down the track. Final thing I wanna share is that I'm currently growing on Instagram and also TikTok, and I share content about what it's like working as a psychologist. Usually it's kind of motivational type content, along with things like book recommendations or podcasts that I'm listening to that relate to psychology that I would recommend. So if any of this interests you as well, please come and check me out on these spaces. That would mean the world to me too. So first up, we're gonna be looking at what most clinical psychology programs have in common. So you can get an idea of like the norms, the standard, this is generally what it's like. Most university programs are highly competitive. They will require students to have at least an upper second class honours, and this alone doesn't guarantee you a place. You have to make it through the application process, which is normally an interview that might require you to do various tasks to show your capability for the course. Most clinical master's programs run for two years. Most require you to be there on campus face-to-face -face learning, and usually the learning consists of coursework, placements, and a small research project. Most of the courses start between February and March each year. Most of the courses also accept domestic and international students, which is fantastic. And on average, most courses cost between 65 and 75,000 Australian dollars for the domestic student. So this gives us a really broad idea of what we can expect from the average clinical master's program. So now we are going to delve into the highest ranking clinical master's course. We're going to delve into the most unique clinical master's course, the most flexible clinical master's course, the cheapest clinical master's course, and the clinical master's course that has the lowest score cutoff for students to be accepted. All right, let's start off by talking about the university that sits at number one in Australia at the moment. And globally, I believe it is in the top 20 universities. That is the University of Melbourne. Given that this university is currently ranking number one, I would take a guess that it is very, very, very competitive to get into this program. But with that, I would also like to assume that it would have really great quality teaching, that the course would be really well established, hopefully it would have a really nice culture to it. Obviously these are just assumptions because I've never studied at the University of Melbourne, 
But when you have a look at the website, it does look really promising. I also like that they share student experiences. They have a really detailed course handbook. And something that is quite appealing about the university is that it has a strong research focus. And when I was going through the handbook, it pointed out that if you're a clinical master's student and you have an interest in going on and doing a PhD, towards the end of your first year, you can actually change your master's into a clinical PhD if that's something that you're starting to get into. So it has that flexibility. Or, you know, you can do your clinical master's and the course says that it will set you up for success to go on and do a PhD if that's something you'd like to do down the track. So I think that strong research focus is a really great part of this course. Other things that are important to know about the course is that it's based in Victoria, in obviously Melbourne. Uh, it takes two years of full-time study that's in person. To be accepted into this course, students will need a weighted average mark, or WAM for short, of 75%. So that's the equivalent of an upper second class honours. The program is open to both domestic and international students. And finally, there are Commonwealth supported places for this program. However, if you do have to pay the full fee for domestic students, the rough estimate will come around to 75,600 Australian dollars for the full two years. All right, now let's talk about the most unique clinical master's program in Australia. That is the one year clinical master's put forward by Curtin University. Basically what this university has done is fantastic. And my hope is that more universities follow suit with this type of path. They still follow APRA's requirements. However, they've just broken it up a little bit more. They've changed the structure. So typically students will do a three year undergrad one year honours and then a two year clinical masters to then go on and become a clinical psychologist. However, what Curtin University has done differently is they had the three year undergrad, one year honours and then a one year professional masters that students will complete. It will help them become fully registered as a psychologist. They'll also do one year of work experience working as a provisional psychologist. So at the end of these six years in total, they will be recognised as a fully registered psychologist and they will be paid during the year that they work, doing their, their kind of their client work as a provisional psych, which is fantastic because most universities that have clinical programs have placements for students that are unpaid and the students are studying full time. So it's really, really hard to get by as a student doing a clinical master's program. So Curtin University makes it a lot more accessible for students because you only have to do five years of full time study before you can get a job. And then what's really cool is you can work as a registered psychologist, you can get some experience, figure out what clients you like working with, develop your skill set as a clinician. And then you can come back to the university and do your one year clinical masters that will help you become endorsed as a clinical psychologist. This program isn't just available to Curtin University graduates, it's available to anyone that has their full registration as a psychologist and would like to go on and get their clinical endorsement. That being said, however, places are limited and like all the other master's programs, it is highly competitive to get into. It should also be noted that this is not the only university in Australia that is currently doing this. There are six other universities that have this kind of pathway to get your general registration and then come back and do a one-year clinical endorsement. However, Curtin University ranks a lot higher than the other universities doing this. And also I have colleagues that studied at Curtin University and had excellent things to say about it. So that's why I picked this university. Some other things to know about the course is that it's located in Western Australia in Perth. It needs to be done face to face and it starts in February. In order to apply for the course, students must have completed a one year professional masters in psychology already. The course itself costs about 37,000 Australian dollars and it's only open to domestic students. All right, now let's talk about the university with the most flexible clinical master's program and that is Charles Sturt University. Their program is the only clinical master's that can be done fully online. There's one other university that also offers the course to be done online but there are some caveats to it. Charles Sturt has no caveats, it can be done fully online and students Students can also choose to do it full-time or part-time. This is a significant difference compared to all of the other universities where you have to do the course face-to-face -face on the campus and also you have to do it full-time. Um, you can't 
change it to part-time study unless you have exceptional circumstances that are out of your control and you're approved by the university. So the fact that Charles Sturt offers their course fully online and also the option of doing it full-time or part-time is, is quite nice for students. Something else unique to the course that I quite liked was that it highlighted to students ways of getting financial assistance for this course in the form of like a subsidy that is done by NSW Health, where if you choose to work for NSW Health after you graduate, you'll get help with your course fees and financial assistance for the course. That's just a nice small feature. A few other things to keep in mind about Charles Sturt University, they are currently ranking as the lowest university in Australia, which is a bit unfortunate. However, something that they do advertise on their website, which I think is worth mentioning, is that they are currently ranked number one in New South Wales for best postgraduate experience, according to Good University Guide. The course commences in February, and in order to apply for the course, students will need a WAM of 75%, which equates to to an upper second class honours. There are also Commonwealth supported places available. The cost of the course is unspecified and it's only available to domestic students. Okay, now let's talk about the university that has the lowest cost for their clinical master's program and that is the Sunshine Coast University. The total fee of the two year course for domestic students, this is over the years 2025 and 2026, is estimated to be around $46,000. This is about 20K less than the average clinical master's program. Given how cheap the cost of this master's course is, it might raise questions for students like, how good is the quality of teaching and the quality of the program? And these are things that I can't really comment on because I've never been to this university. If finding this out is important to you, it's good to network and talk to students who've been to this university, look them up on LinkedIn, reach out to academic staff who can perhaps share a bit more about the course. And I also like to check the university website. While I was looking into this university a bit more, something on their homepage that I quite liked, that appealed to me, was that they had a research center for clinical master's students to work at. I think it's called the Thompson Institute. And they just showcased all the research that was going on here and their specific research focus into young people and adolescents and also elderly people in the community. So I felt this was quite an appealing feature of the university. At the end of the day, this university will help you become a clinical psychologist at a considerably lower fee than other universities. So if finances are a bit of a concern, if you don't wanna rack up your hex debt, this could be a good option for you. A few other things to take into account about this course is that in Australia, the Sunshine Coast University currently ranks at 33 out of 37 universities. The course is based in Queensland, obviously on the Sunshine Coast. It takes two years full time. It needs to be done in person and it commences in February. Students will need a WAM of at least 75% to get into the course, which is the equivalent of an upper second class honors. And the course is available to both domestic and international students. Finally, the university that accepts students with lower grades compared to most programs out there is Federation University. On their website, they say that students applying for the course need to have a credit average for their fourth year, which is the equivalent of a 65% WAM or a lower second class honours. There is only one other university in Australia that will accept students into the course with a lower second class honours. However, their course also comes with some caveats, which is why I choose Federation University as the winner for this category. Something else that I really liked about Federation University is that it also asks students to showcase if they had practical experience or further study in another discipline to show that they could keep up with the requirements that would be needed for a clinical master's course. The emphasis of the application process doesn't seem to be on grades, but rather experiences. A few other things to keep in mind about Federation University. On the university scale, it scored at number 36, so it was quite low on this ranking. The course is based in Victoria. It will take two years of full-time study that needs to be done in person. However, something unique about the course that I liked was that it had two entry points. You could either start it in February or you could start it in July. The course is open for both domestic and international students and the cost of the course for domestic students is 77,600 Australian dollars. So that's a wrap on this video and I hope that you are left with something you weren't quite expecting. I hope it gives you a bit of perspective when you're trying to figure out where to study 
if you want to do a clinical master's in Australia. There is a broad range of options out there. We have just scratched the surface in this video. We've only looked at a few clinical master's programs. There are so many others available to students and we haven't even touched professional master's or the endorsement master's programs in other areas that are available to students. If you'd like to start looking into all the other opportunities that are out there for psychology students for your master's program, then my guide is a great place to start. I'll leave some information for that in the description of this video. I'm still a little bit on the fence for how long I'm gonna leave this guide up on my page. So if you would like to get a copy, I recommend doing it sooner rather than later. One final hot tip that I'm gonna give if you're worried about where to study I think it's always useful to talk to students that have been to that university and there are several Facebook pages out there where you can ask if students have been and ask about their experiences. You can also try LinkedIn or look at the university page and look and see if you can get in touch with academic staff or with students that might be able to tell you a bit more about the course. I really hope that all of the information in this video was useful for you. Best of luck with your master's application and I've got a couple of master's videos videos coming up next about the application process and the interview process. If that is something that you'd like to learn more about, stay tuned for that. I'll see you around in another video. Bye!